Hello, this is Julie Yassar, Realtor, uh, working with Realty One Group Iconic in Spring, Texas area. Today I have a, a guest. Uh, his name is Levant Öztürk. He is a home inspector, structure engineer at the same time. And I'm going to ask him uh, about this uh, topic and uh, he's going to answer. So tell me a little bit about yourself first, then we can continue. Sure. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me here. Um, so um, uh, I was born and raised in Istanbul, Turkey, and um, came to further my college education. Uh, in 1999, I came to uh, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and got my master's degree there and uh, got my first job uh, in Houston in 2002. Uh, I worked in offshore industry pretty much my entire career. Uh, until 2017, that's when I started my own company, NOLA Engineering. And uh, so with my company, uh, uh, basically what I do is uh, uh, mostly forensic engineering for uh, uh, insurance companies, which is pretty much damage assessment for uh, buildings uh, that have gone through either some flood event or some wind event. Uh, and um, so that's, that's basically what I do, but uh, on my free time, I also do home inspections uh, uh, for you know, residential buildings for potential home buyers. And uh, whenever a small job comes, I also do some structural design work every once in a while. Okay. So uh, can you tell us what is the home inspection? Uh, home inspection is, uh, in a nutshell, I would say uh, it's just a visual inspection of residential buildings. Uh, for potential home buyers. Uh, and, uh, you know, from the inspector's point of view, what we do basically is providing information uh, about the general condition of the house to the buyer uh, with the goal of helping them to make a wise decision on a big investment that they're about to make. Uh, just pretty much to educate them about, uh, you know, what is potentially wrong with the house what kind of repairs are necessary, stuff like that. Uh, unfortunately, you know, there is sometimes mismatch between uh, what the buyers expect from the home inspector versus what is actually provided. Uh, you know, uh, some people just wanna have the home inspection done just for the purpose of negotiation. Uh, yeah, I mean, that it can help with that, but that's, that's not the primary goal. Uh, really, our goal is to uh, help them know about the house, basically, yeah. know what they are buying, where, where they are spending their money, and then make a decision based on that. It's never our job to tell them, yes, buy this house or don't buy it. Uh, that's not our job, okay. but uh, we want to give them uh, as much information as possible so that they can make the correct call. So uh, what is included in the inspection? Like, uh, um, as a structural general. engineer, uh, I only do the structural part of the inspection. Uh, when we are talking about a full inspection on a house, uh, it also includes, you know, other than the structural items, which I will uh, explain in a few minutes in detail, mm -hmm. uh, other than those items, it also has mechanical items, uh, mainly the electrical things and the uh, plumbing of the house, uh, you know, AC units and all that. Uh, so for those, I always come with a trek inspector with me. So he takes care of that part of the house. Uh, but upon request, uh, I can also arrange uh, a termite inspector to come, a pool inspector. Uh, so whatever needs to be inspected in the house, pretty much. So uh, the structural side, that's my expertise area. Uh, it includes basically the foundation of the house. Uh, by that, uh, I also mean, you know, the grading and the drainage around the house, mm -hmm. which are important factors when evaluating a foundation. And we also do elevation survey to get a numerical value of the levelness of the slab. Uh, so just to support our uh, visual observations of the condition of the foundation. Then, of course, uh, we look in detail uh, into the framing of the house, uh, which is basically the primary load carrying, uh, load carrying members. Uh, you know, on the walls and also the roof framing members and then the roof surface. Uh, these are the three major items, I would say. Other than that, uh, we also add, of course, the exterior and interior details, some of which include, um, uh, you know, important items such as moisture intrusion, 
especially in the Houston climate, that's an important aspect. It is important, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, and moisture can enter the house, not only from the roof, but it can enter from the ground level, uh, which is semi covered in the foundation in the part of the inspection, of course. Uh, but also, uh, you know, uh, due to some uh, openings, not properly sealed windows and doors. Uh, so there are a lot of reasons why moisture can uh, come into the house. And without you seeing it, it can cause massive damage over the years. Very so that's exactly. something that we cover, of course. And then, uh, of course, overall condition of more cosmetic items like, you know, uh, drywalls, uh, brick, veneer outside or any other type of cladding and on the interior doors and windows, floors and whatnot. So uh, we look at into, into all those details as well. All right. So... Um... What is your suggestion? How can they find the inspector um, as a buyer? <laughs> yes, based on my experience, the best way is to definitely ask. Ask your realtor. Uh, you know, experienced realtors will mm -hmm. know a lot of inspectors in town, and they typically come up with a few recommendations for you. And, uh, you know, based on the condition of the house, based on your needs, based on how much you're willing to spend. Uh, typically, you can get a few uh, recommendations from your realtor. Uh, but uh, myself, I get most of my jobs through uh, word of mouth recommendations from one person to another. You know, I go to a home inspection for somebody, you know, they see my work, uh, how detailed I am, uh, you know, uh, they see the detail level of my report. And then uh, when they have a friend who is buying a house, they recommend me. And that's, that's basically how I get most of my business. But uh, yeah, like I said, if you're working with a realtor as a home buyer, definitely ask them first. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, how much does it cost to the buyer? Can you, I know it's hard to answer this question. Uh, it is depends on so much other things, but can you give us a average something? Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, there can be a significant difference, big variety based on uh, several factors. Uh, what are these factors? Um, one, uh, big reputable company versus uh, small. You know, there are a lot of inspectors uh, who just work for themselves. Uh, and um, compared to those big reputable companies, their prices are most of the time more reasonable. Uh, unless, you know, you're dealing with an inspector who has been doing this for 30 years, but for some reason, he never had any interest in uh, you know, improving his uh, uh, business yes. and then he just mm -hmm. wanted to stay small, but the quality he provides uh, will require, uh, you know, a high cost for the inspection, of course. Uh, then, yeah, talking about quality, which in my opinion is the most important thing. Uh, what is this quality? It's knowledge of the inspector, the thoroughness of the uh, inspection and the detail level of the inspection and the report. Uh, with the big reputable companies, um, you don't get a good inspector guaranteed. Yes, they do have good inspectors, but uh, it's a hit or miss. You can also have a, have them send you an inspector with one week experience. That's not, uh, too, not? That, that's not too, too uncommon. Yeah. yeah, unless your realtor knows the person in person, uh, you will never know uh, what who they're gonna send send to you. So uh, you may end up uh, uh, paying a lot of money for. Uh, for a very inexperienced uh, inspector to, you know, look at your house. And uh, the third factor is, of course, uh, are you hiring a track inspector versus an engineer? Uh, that also, you know, the decision on that uh, uh, depends on several factors, but mainly, you know, the age of the house, condition of the house, maybe the size of the house, you know, what kind of an investment you're making. Because, uh, I mean, let's face it, when you hire an engineer, you are expected to pay a little more, but yes. uh, compared to the, the degree of investment you're making, uh, that money is really negligible. It's small. Yeah. Yes, yes, very negligible. So um, uh, you also need to think about if you hire a track inspector, and don't get me wrong, there are very good track inspectors in town. Some of them I know and I work with. Uh, but there are limitations, you know, they may come to an older house and then they may see some issues with the foundation or framing. At that point, uh, it doesn't matter how experienced they are. They don't want to take the liability. It's not their job. Uh, all they do is look, this is the concern that I see with the foundation. 
I strongly recommend you to go and hire a structural engineer to take a more detailed look. So at that point, you end up hiring the structural inspector on top of the track inspector that you hired. So the business model that I provide uh, pretty much covers both, best of both worlds, in my opinion, because yeah, you get an engineer to do the structural part, but you also get the track inspector to do the mechanical side. So you save a little bit on that side. Uh, and yeah, you get an engineering report at the end for your investment, which is, uh, if you think about it, it can be very valuable when you're selling the house later down the road. Uh, you can always show, look, I had my house inspected by an engineer yes, and that's very important. everything looks good, you know? You're right. That's very yeah. important. So uh, do you suggest uh, for buyers when you do the inspection, uh, should they be there with you? Should yes, that uh, that's a very good point, Gulai and uh, uh, Julie. <laughs> and uh, uh, I definitely recommend that. Uh, uh, because name, it's always easier to go through some of the details uh, with the buyer physically there and understand that way they can understand what the inspector is observing and recommending when it is shown to you rather than reading about it as a statement in the report uh, and going through the pictures. Yes, you know we try to be as thorough and detailed and clear as possible in the report. Uh, but it can never beat, in my opinion, actually seeing it with your own eyes. Uh, and you also if you think about it, you get to ask the inspector many more questions, whatever is in your, on your mind, you can just directly show it to the inspector and say, hey, what is this? Yes. Or what's the concern about this one? Uh, in your opinion, is this a big deal or not? So you can go into some in-depth discussion with the inspector while he's there, when, the, you know, when his observations are fresh in his mind. Yeah. Uh, right on the spot, you get that information. If you uh, have any other questions, you just ask up front right now. And yeah, I absolutely. strongly suggest same thing too. Absolutely. I mean, we, we always provide the option to the uh, buyers to, you know, call us after they read the report. You know, if you have any questions, just call us because uh, let's face it, uh, during the verbal rundown, uh, we cannot cover everything. So there are, especially with older houses, there are a lot of wear and tear on the house. And some of the smaller items, they are, they are not really worth mentioning. Uh, in that limited time, we touch base on the more important items. Uh, but you know, if the buyer sees it in the report, hey, hey, we did not talk about this. Uh, just call the inspector and ask next day if it is not clear to you. Yeah. Okay. So, do you uh, give some estimate repair cost as well? Um, Typically, we don't do that. Uh, yes, we sometimes provide a range on the cost estimate. Mm -hmm. uh, if it is more of a major item, uh, if it is really my expertise area, you know, uh, on the foundation, roof, all those things, uh, we have more of a generic idea about how much it would cost to fix it. But um, you also need to consider, depending on who's going to do the repair, uh, the extent of the damage and the degree of uh, repair that they're going to go through. So those are all very important factors that can fluctuate that repair cost significantly. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of inspectors, they just don't like to do a, provide a cost estimate. That's because not of your that. job, actually, anyway. Yes, it's not your job, you know, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you, you mentioned what's wrong with it and what needs to be repaired. Yeah. And then it's the buyer's job to, as soon as possible, yeah, before the period ends, hire the right person, the person who is actually going to repair it, who's going to charge you for it. He's going to come there and then uh, look into that item specifically in more detail and provide you with a more accurate estimate. Uh, even you know when inspectors provide a cost estimate, my recommendation would not just rely on that and accept yes. it as a fact. Uh, they're just trying to help you. Some inspectors still do that, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, don't take it as a fact. It's just uh, based on a limited observation. Don't think, think it's true. I mean, yes. it has to be this price. It might be lower, it might mm -hmm. be higher. So yes. don't rely on you, yes. right? I mean, simple example is a very obvious example is roof. Uh, even if we are talking about a full replacement of a roof uh -huh. uh, for the same house, you can get a roofer that will do it for six thousand dollars. Another roofer will say, "Hey, fifteen thousand yeah. dollars." You say, "But my product is so much better than the other one." You get what you pay for. Yeah. Okay. So if As I tell the buyer, "Ah, oh, yeah, this is for six thousand dollars," you can replace it. What if he wants that better quality shingle on his roof? 
and he's gonna get that fifteen thousand dollars price, and he will be mad at the inspector because that's an unexpected cost. Because yes. maybe just based on your estimate, he factored in okay, six thousand dollars. Maybe he will negotiate that with the seller, and then he will actually call the roofer two months later, and that's the that will be the first time the buyer will hear fifteen thousand versus the six thousand. He's gonna get shocked. He will be disappointed with your estimate. Yes. So that's why we tend not to do that. Yes. But when it comes to like a foundation repair, uh, based on what I'm observing, I can come up with an estimate, you know, ballpark figure, but it's also my job to let them know how that price can fluctuate based on what factors mm -hmm. uh, so that they will know, you know, it will not come as a shock if they hear a completely different quote from uh, another foundation repair company. So um, one more question, actually two more I'm gonna ask. Mm -hmm. uh, should the buyer waive inspection contingency? What are uh, the disadvantages about that? Do you uh, recommend, I could say? Absolutely not. The, they, they, they should definitely get the inspection done. Uh, we kind of talked about it, you know, based on the, uh, yeah. relative to the, uh, the, the money they're spending on this investment, uh, the cost of the inspection is negligible. Uh, in reality, if you look at it that way, if you are just looking at it as a, a cost efficiency, Okay, I'm trying to save a few hundred dollars. You can actually lose potentially thousands of dollars by not hiring yes. the inspector, uh, because that way you will not know about certain situations in the house that will require immediate attention or uh, some repair, you know, cost item waiting for you down the road, such as your roof being okay for the moment, but the inspector may tell you, look, in two or three years you should uh, expect yes. the roof to be replaced. So have $10,000 on the side reserved for that job. So you want to know about those things. But again, more importantly are the, uh, um, the existing situations. You know, uh, the best example for that, I would say, would be based on my experience, uh, uh, stucco, OK? Uh, you have a lot of buildings in Houston with stucco veneer outside. And um, unfortunately, um, the builders, not all the builders are good at building stucco homes. And uh, especially uh, up until the mid 2000s, you know, uh, mm -hmm. they were, they did not know a lot about stucco uh, construction. And there were a lot of uh, things that are missed that can cause vulnerability to water penetration. Stucco just leaks, okay, if you don't seal it properly. And uh, based on those leaks, because of those leaks, you can not notice, but due to those leaks, you can actually end up with uh, extensive damage, not only on the wood sheeting behind the stucco, but also the entire framing behind it. It may start getting you know, you water damage before know. you know it and before it's too late. Yeah. Uh, the most uh, significant example of that uh, I have seen in my experience was, uh, you know, I, I went to this big house with a you know, stucco veneer and I did see signs, you know, some evidence of damage behind the stucco. Mm -hmm. You know, we see those cracks on the stucco and they don't look like cracks related to foundation movement. And you're like, okay, uh, these are most probably due to the uh, excessive moisture behind the stucco. So that's your evidence that there is moisture behind the stucco, but uh, is there any damage behind it? Is, or if there is, how much? So at that point, what the inspector can do is point out what he sees and recommends you to hire a stucco expert yeah. to do some drilling, some probing on your walls and try to uh, get a more in-depth knowledge about the if there's any damage behind the stucco, if yes, how much. But at the end, uh, you will typically end up with a, if there is damage, you'll end up hiring contractors to you know uh, remove the walls and then uh, come up with the uh, entire a scope of, of the repairs. <laughs> and again, uh, the worst example I saw of that was a house that needed $100,000 in repairs just because of the stucco leaks. So for that house, uh, I, I charged about $1,000 for the inspection uh, to and the home buyer. $100,000 actually. <laughs> yes, we saved that person $100,000 if you look at yeah. it that way. So yeah. um, definitely it's important. I, I recommend the home inspection to be done. As a realtor, my suggestion is the same like you. You sh must definitely get the inspector. Yes, I mean, yes. of course, and it's also, up to you, but that's our suggestion. <laughs> yes. And also, you know, uh, going back to uh, the cost range and who to hire, 
uh, my recommendation is always hire the best inspector you can, okay? Uh, you're making a big investment, cost of inspection is negligible. Uh, go for the best guy you can have yes. come to your house. What about uh, when you send the report? Um, considering the nature of this business, you know how the option periods are so short, yeah. uh, we are fully aware of that. So uh, we uh, type the report the same day. Uh, I personally prefer to do a fresh review with a fresh mind in the mornings before I head out uh, of my uh, office. So I do the review in the morning, I send the report then. But of course, there are cases when uh, uh, they are really at the end of their option period and they want to have the report immediately. In those cases, of course, uh, we, we just adjust our strategy and uh, provide the report the same day instead of waiting for the next morning because sometimes, sometimes one day is even important. Sometimes, yeah, we need immediately. So uh, yes, thank Julie. you for joining me today, Levant. It oh, thank you so much. It was my pleasure. Yeah, very good conversation with you. Likewise. So uh, see you next week. Thank you for watching me.